Raquel has a substantial height advantage, 13 centimeters. A bit of a reach advantage as well, but some long arms for Gabula there. Yeah. Arm length is a huge it's advantage. Really of course, reach in general, but the length of your forearm and okay, your guys, upper arm. Listen to me at all times. That's a genetic well, advantage. Stop, stop. Okay, if you want to touch gloves, touch gloves now. We're in this LFL fight in the welterweight division. It's scheduled three rounds of five minutes. Referee is Mr. Tariq Khan. Look at both of their arm length, <laughs> actually. When you look at the, the Judge, two segments of Tico's arms, they're, they're Fighters, long, too. Fight. We are underway with our sixth fight of the evening, Brakel versus Gabulu. We can see the height difference between the two of them here. Raquel looks like he's towering over Gabulu. Yeah, Tico Raquel is uh, a very long. See how he's staying in it? All, he's already kind of letting himself sit in that area of danger, and that's where he get, puts you in danger when you sort of bite and start throwing at him. Pressure from Gabolu, but he's definitely watched Brockles fights. Yeah, he doesn't want to rush in. Yeah, he's, he's probably seen that he can get wild. Yeah, I think he wants to just get him engaging and then try to get to the hips. Gabulu Kyle's try to get to the hips. Kyle's got to be careful here not to get too backed up against the fence and not do enough lateral movement. Mm. Some good head, head movement there by Gabolu, but when he makes Brockle miss with his hands, he needs to counter. Mm. It's a good straight right from Brockle there. This when when he has Brockle up against the fence like that, that's where he needs to get over the top. Yeah. Or, or down underneath and get to the to the thighs. Yeah, invest in the body and then the head will Whoa. That's a heavy penetrating shot from Tico Brockle. And that was a lightning fast jab as well coming from Brockel. See how he's his, with that year? You feel those. Yep. Yep. Digged in the body deep. Nice one too there mm. by Rocco. He's moving his feet a little less than he did in his last couple times, but as I say that, the knee comes up the middle. He needs to move to his left a little faster. He lets Gabolu move him up against the fence too easily. Ooh, Gabolu uh, throwing heavy. Oh, yeah. And he nice just overhand. leads him like a clay pigeon into the path of the overhand. Yeah, Gabolu's definitely opening up now. He's got, he's got a good look to him, Gabolu. It's a good uppercut there from Chico Bracco. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is, be careful there. This is another one that's dangerous for all parties involved, including the ref and you at home. <laughs> Raquel being interestingly static in some yeah. of these positions. I, I think it's because he wants you to fire and, you know, leaves his head in a position to invite your punches, see? So he wants you to punch and then he wants to set his feet and throw two or three. He has to there, right, like right, right now. One, this is what, he wants the right hand to come. If it doesn't, then he'll jab, goes back, keeps his chin as an invitation for a right hand, goes left hand again. He's going to throw the right when you do. Gabolo needs to be careful with his head movement, with the knees from Brocco. He showed some good head movement, but when he throw, Brocco throws his knee up like that, when you move out of the way... You can, you can tell yeah. if, if Gabolo is going to go for a takedown, brockel has been working on that knee to hit him up straight in the middle. Some nice straight punches from Brockel. Um, Gabolu's best shot has been the right hand to the body, the straight right to the body. He's come at it from a few different angles. Yeah, especially when you fight a tall fighter, we have a tendency to lean backwards, and then yeah. the body opens up, and they were hurt way, way more. Raquel needs to be careful here, just resting his back against the wire. Mm. Oh, there's the knee. Nice Oh, yeah, solid right there. And they both fired rights. The Bolo's legs seem to buckle a little bit there. You can tell as soon as, he, as soon as that happened, he came in yeah. the clinch. Smart. Up against the cage. Smart. It's the game. Take that moment. Something happened. He felt his body wobble or weaken underneath him. He's got a body lock, but Rocco has an underhook, not very deep. Yeah, underhook on his own right side and an overhook on the left, pulling his man up. 
What Gabolu wants to do here is drag Rocco from the fence because he's using the fence to stay up now. Good head placement from Gabolu here, directing the fight from there. It, it felt through four and a half minutes that Tico Bracco did more work. But the last 30 seconds being owned by Gabolu, you can't be sure how these three humans are going to score this if you're either guy. Like, Gabolu like isn't doing anything specifically with this, but, but there's human perspective that is part of judging. It doesn't matter what you and I think. It matters what these three people think. And those, those foot stomps in the air. The end of the first no round. Joke either. An intriguing first round. Raquel looking to sit back a little bit against the cage, invite Gabulu on and try and hit him on the counter. But in terms of our rules, Gabulu move forward, arguably more aggressive, ring control. Yeah, the 100%. Judges, judges are going to have a tough one, but would have liked to call it, but Gabulu might have won it on those technicalities. Might have, but if you're the corners, you might want to urge your guy to take this round. And then if, the, if it's still continuing, operate under the idea that you lost round one. I think both corners yeah. should be telling their should, Yeah, they, they both they should. Lost that. Yeah. We might feel like Gabolu uh, won that round. Um, if you are uh, uh, Tico, you probably feel like you won it because you were touching him. You didn't get hit as much as you as you thought. But if you were the coaches, you want to believe you may, both fighters to believe they may have lost the round. Definitely feel that. Bracco's coaches will tell him that he needs to move away from the fence more, move to his left sooner, instead of waiting for Gabolo to start. He needs to start. Every single time Gabolo comes too close, he needs to fire. But he was okay, judge, too tentative really, in that first round really, with that. And Raquel, really fighting, it showed his really, tactic was working really, to some degree when he got uh, Gabolo to wobble a little bit with that right. Yeah, beautiful straight yeah. right. So if he can look for that opportunity again, but as you were saying, Stefan, not be backed up in the cage. Oh, beautiful left hook there by Gabo. And the right, straight right to the body again. Yep. It's been excellent. Now oh, underneath. Look at that beautiful way to duck under those strikes and get the takedown. And, you know, 20 seconds into the round, he's down. Uh, the key to it was the 10 or 15 seconds of, of intense, you know, um, stand-up fighting. That opened up the takedown. And we get to see what Brookell can do from guard here, because this is not a great position to be in with four and a half minutes to go. He definitely has some tricks from his back, but what Cabolo is doing now, he's pressing him up against the fence, so it's really hard for Brocco to get his hips involved. So there's not a real submission tread on this. He uses the fence here and goes for an armbar now, but Cabolo yeah. recognizes that, keeps his hips really close yeah. to Brocco, so really no... No danger here for Gabolu at this time. And the thighs just sort of closing slightly to, to, to lock those hips. Now, Tico has double overhooks. One's gone now. Double overhooks, and he had great finds. Goes to a, a body triangle from his back, which is something tall fighters like doing. Yeah, it's very easy to get, but you can't really do anything from your back there just to control your opponent. Yeah. It, you, you've got him stuck to you, but you're stuck to him. Yep. But Gabulu is a uh, submissions expert. This is where he leans towards. So for him with time to work. Oh, yeah, if you're Gabulu, you, you're pretty happy about how this fight's been going. A very close round one that you probably feel like you won. And then now two minutes into round two in total control. You see Tico going back to those great finds. Every single time Gabulu tries to sit up and throw punches, when you use those great finds, he can't sit up because you can off-balance him at any moment. And you, uh, people at home, when you hear Stefan say grapevines, it means the feet are connecting under the, the knees or the legs and then straightening out Kabolu's legs. So, like so he's right there. Right like now. he's doing right now, yep. yeah. You see Tico's left foot in particular is a good example. Now he goes in and lifts to get underneath with the left lever. What's your position? Butterfly. You could definitely go for a butterfly sweep with those long legs, but he needs to control an arm and... But, uh, right he, now. he tried it. The, ju oh, the, the jiu-jitsu nerds call that one a butter half these days. Butter half. You butter got a half guard on one side and a butterfly on the other. Good control so far by Gabolu, though. He's doing the same thing as when he started around pressing Brock up against the fence to take away that submission trap. I, that heavy breathing feels like it's Gabolu, it, it seems, but that's okay. If you're on top and you're working hard, that's okay if you're going to keep the top position. 
And some guys are better when they get breathing heavy. Mm -hmm, Your second right. win, yeah, yeah. they really get going. Yeah. Depends on the type of athlete you are. If you're more anaerobic, yeah, you know, you, you're a sprint, recover, sprint, recover, and, and you hear that breathing. Yeah. Gabolo's looking for a wrist ride or a yeah. Dagestani handcuff, whatever you want to call it. But definitely not a position you want to be in. Brocco recognized it. Yeah, and it looks like Brocco is trying to get onto his yeah. side and hunt for something, but Gabolo is drop that out now. Great round for Morgan Gabula. <laughs> nice short elbow there by Gabula. So many things going his way right now. Uh, the big picture too, you know, you got a guy who's very snappy and whippy with his strikes. Get him down here, get him doing like the grindy work. It'll take some of that snap away if Tico gets up now or if he survives the round. Brokel's got the single butterfly in again. It's very difficult to use that when you're stuck against the fence like this, though. Butter half. Brandon McCatherine, second degree under Eddie Bravo. I worked with him a couple weekends ago on subversive BJJ. Uh, you see that this position is a super, you know, today kind of kind of spot for the guy in the bottom. But that's jujitsu without striking. It's a different game when the man on top can hit you. I can see the risk of that sweep. Kabulu just dropped his hips down, stopped that movement. And when you're the taller fighter, almost every single time your opponent is physically stronger. Uh, especially in positions like this. Low center of gravity stuff. Yep. And you, so you've had that experience with almost every fighter you face. <laughs> almost every single time. So technically, I oh, he's got, yeah, he's got oh, not yeah, enough second time. Oh, a second left, and you have the guillotine locked in, Gabulu. But he, you know, the, he got a lot out of that round. Did Morgan Gabulu won the round? Did a little damage, fatigued his other man, learned a lot, and presumably slowed, slowed down some of the snap in those punches. I want to see how came out in that second round looking for a different approach to the first one, being a bit more active, not sitting back, trying to be there, and that ended up him in a tough situation with a takedown that I'm sure we'll see very shortly. Right there. Level change, beautiful job to take away the leg with his own leg. Yeah, and he went to the body lock. He didn't go to the double leg. He went to the body lock, step through, yeah. Well, it's what happens when your opponent's that tall. Mm. Just cut down like a tree. Yep. Just lumberjacks him straight to the floor. And Brocco needs to do something. I think his corner is telling him that. So if you're if you're Tico Brocco's corner, we're like, I think we need a finish. No, maybe you don't. But let's get you operating as if you do. You definitely need to win this round. Yes. And if you're Gabolu, you, you're pretty confident you won two. You might have won round one, but you don't know. So you need to win this round. Uh, Tico, you want to aim to win it dominantly, and as you get more dominance, try to finish. Oh, the blueprint for Gabolo is there. Unfortunately, Brokel does not have that same blueprint of how to win this this third and final. Uh, uppercuts and knees. Man, we've got a lot of cup touches tonight. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Ready? Uppercuts ready to go again. Uh, uppercuts and knees for Tico Brackle. what he needs to do, jab and move, jab and move. And be ready to slip and rip. Nice leg kick. But what we saw in his last couple of victories, that's what he does well these days. It can be very tiring to work from that distance and you know punish your opponent every single time he comes in too close, but it's exactly what Brocco needs to do. Throw those lungs, straight punches, punish those legs. Underneath, a little lower this time. The defense though by Brocco. He's got him turned though. So yeah. But Gabulu converts. And Brokel has his position there for butterflies. But as Stefan was saying in the first round, pushed up against the cage like that, not the easiest position to use. In yeah, especially with a physical strong opponent on top of you like a bowl. Because when you're trying to get under him, the, the simple metaphor people use is like a golf ball with a plate on it try to get underneath the plate and get it moving. Uh, but he's not under him enough. He's under him, you know, factually speaking, but not all the way under from a, from a leverage perspective. So he can't really, he can't really sweep him from here. Don't the cage. Do that again after that one point. 
Yeah, the reason he got such a clean warning was because it was such a clean infraction. Like, you grab the fence to change your position. You're going to get one that the next time you're going to get. You know, it's not an accidental or an incidental one. That was a purposeful, purposeful grab. Everyone gets to cheat a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the little, that's what you got. You got that move. You're on the bottom, so it didn't improve your position that much. You got a clean warning. Do it again, and, and you're losing a point, and presumably the fight if you lose a point here. It shows the way Brockle's feeling right now, though, because he doesn't really get anything done from this position. He can't hit his sweeps. He doesn't get to a better position. He, he has this strong... French wrestler on top of him who's winning the fight. Position really smart. He's got that wrist right, but Brockle got his arm free again. Yeah, all Brockle is doing is stopping Gabulu advancing. Beyond that, it's Gabulu is controlling it. And Gabula might be happy to stay here. Yeah. Get the points, not take too much damage. <laughs> you, you, he's very happy to stay here because, you know, you're winning the fight here. It's, it is on Tico Brackle to, to create something different. But it's easy to say here. It's easy to say sitting here, sitting at our homes. But not letting him advance is the immediate concern because if he advances, he's going to smash my face in. So you, the fact that he's preventing a further invasion of, of, of real estate is you know his number one job and if, if that's all he can accomplish for two minutes he'll lose the fight rocco needs to sit up use the fence get his back from the mat they want him to get his right leg in sight to hit that sweep but Gabolu won't let him of course no it it isn't a criticism of, of Tico Brackle in any way. This is all a credit to Gabolo. Now he had, yeah, it was like a small window to sit up. But when you're as tall as, as, as Brackle is, I know it's difficult to be there in that position. You almost want to let him pass and get your knees to the mat and turn around, let him take your back. But it's, it's, it's difficult when you're tall, when someone has got your back like that to get back up. And when Gabulu as well is a submission-based fighter, yep. they might have decided as a team not to allow that sort of giving up the back because, you know, Gabulu won his last round, his last fight of a rear naked choke. Hey, giving up the back the might not be the best solution. But what, what else have you got to do at this time? When, when we watch it, we're, we're all missing all the information that, um, that these two have right now. Tico has the information about how threatened he feels every time he moves. His body has that information, his mind has that information. So if he moves too much, he knows he's gonna get choked or, or into a worse spot. So he's trying to find a, a safe way out of here and it's just not there. Uh, Gabolu just isn't letting him have a safe way. Now he's safe. Better now. Yep. Now he needs to turn his hips, get his knees under him. But with 20 seconds to go now, too late. yeah, there's just, you know, a sweep would be a nice way to end the fight, but it's not a winning moment. And this is, this is a winning moment. For the Pull out Gabulu for a second at the end. And that's what Kiko could say is when he moved too much, he was going to get mounted. Uh, and uh, that's a real credit. Morgan Gabulu, a tough fight. Tough, challenging close round one. And then he started getting taking over and being more and more dominant. I, I really like this kid. I, I'm excited. I can't wait to see him again. Yeah, as soon as Gabulu found out that he could shoot and take down and control Brokel, that was a fight. An excellent performance from Kabulu. A real, a real problem to anyone at welterweight in NFL. Yeah, that's that, this is round three. This is the harder one. Tico wasn't just giving it away, but uh, as soon as that corner was turned, and then the rest of the fight. Good there. defense from Brocco until. Gabolo got his hands locked and completed a takedown, and then it was all him for the rest of the round. Baloo Comer, Carter, Morgan Gabolo. Morgan Gabolo. Ma Francais très mauvais. Je m'excuse. My English is very bad. Then we're going to be okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Come on. Uh, hey, man. It was a, a tough round one. But then round two and three just dominated, gets stronger and stronger. You gotta be very happy with this fight. Yes, I'm very happy. I worked so hard with my teammate, US Mitchell Parry. 
Donc, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad. You can see the hard work as the fight got tougher. You got tougher, yes. and it, it reflects how hard you've been working. Yes, exactly. It's a tough guy in my mind. Every day, I'm rock hard yeah. for the victory. Mm. This is a victory. This is a victory, well earned. En français, thank anyone you like. Je voudrais tous vous remercier. LFL, merci beaucoup. Et à bientôt, j'espère. Congratulations, sir. Loved watching you fight. Your winner, Morgan Gabo.